Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A plus certification training course. And this module, we're going to talk about working with device drivers. I'm James Messer. And in this module, we're going to go through CompTIA 220-601 requirements in section 3.2. So this is from our essentials exam on how to install, configure, optimize, and upgrade operating systems, specifically loading, adding device drivers, working with device drivers, new pieces of hardware. We're going to talk about permissions. We're going to talk about installing device drivers, what unsigned drivers might be. And then we're going to look at actually how to install the driver. I'll take you through that process in Windows. We're going to go through an overview first of what is a device driver and why are they so important. We'll talk about how to install, we'll verify operation, and we'll uninstall some device drivers live on our machine. Let's first talk about why a device driver is so important. First thing that the operating system needs to be able to do is talk to these hardware devices connected to your computer. These might be ports in the back of your system. They might be displays that you have connected. They may have be keyboards that you have on your machine. But your operating system doesn't inherently know how to talk to these devices. All of these different ports and connectors and displays are probably made by many different manufacturers. So there needs to be some way for your operating system to know how to communicate to those pieces of hardware out there. This is where the device driver comes in. The device drivers are specific to the hardware that you have and are specific to the operating system that you're running. So everything has to sync up here. If you have a certain piece of hardware, if you have a display that's made by ViewSonic, then you need to have a driver from ViewSonic for that display that works on the operating system that you have installed. So if you have Windows XP, then your ViewSonic device driver has to be specific to Windows XP. ViewSonic probably has other device drivers for Windows 2000, for Windows Vista. So you need to make sure you're installing the right one for your operating system. If you have Windows NT device drivers and you've upgraded to Windows 2000 or Windows XP, you won't be able to use those old drivers anymore. So one of the things we mentioned prior to doing an install upgrade from any operating system to another, you need to make sure you have the new device drivers for the system that you're installing. And there are quite a few device drivers that you'll have to worry about. We'll talk about that in a moment as well. There is a reason whenever you call technical support with some type of hardware problem that your display is acting a little odd or your keyboard or your mouse isn't working the way you would expect. One of the first things they tend to ask is, have you updated the drivers? Are there new device drivers are running? Have you been to our website? Have you downloaded the latest? Because the problem you're having may be resolved in the latest version of drivers. So it's very important that you know how to do this so that when that situation comes up, you know how to address it and how to install the latest drivers. In Windows, you can see all of the device drivers from the Windows Device Manager. This is a screenshot of the Windows Device Manager. We're going to be diving into it in just a moment and looking at it live. But this screenshot is from my machine. I've broken out a few of the different categories. And it shows you in this very simple to read view what different categories, what type of disk drives you have, what type of display adapters are in your machine. Uh, different keyboards, network adapters. And under each one of these categories, it should list out all of the pieces of hardware for that specific category that are installed in your machine. If there are problems with any of these devices, we may see it in the Device Manager. And this is a great place to go to when you're looking to install or uninstall drivers as well. Let's go through a process of that. Let's start the process of installing device drivers and what we need to look out for. One of the first things we should do is download the latest drivers. When you buy a new piece of hardware, one of the things you'll notice is inside the package will be a CD or some type of driver installation guide that says, here's the driver so you can get up and running. And they may allow you to get the device up and running, but you may find that the drivers themselves are relatively old. They were shipped out and put on a shelf somewhere and sat there for a while. There may be new drivers that came out yesterday. The only way you would have access to those is if you downloaded them from the website so that you could then install them. We want to make sure that we're also running an administrator level permissions or access in our operating system. Most drivers require this because they are writing to very specific areas on the drive. So make sure that you have administrator access before you do that. Another thing you'll notice is if you're installing certain drivers, 
they may first give you a message that say, these drivers are unsigned. And that means that Microsoft has not performed any type of certification on these drivers and essentially in a digital way signed off on them. If they are unsigned, that means that that company that created that driver did not send them to Microsoft and have Microsoft test them in their labs. Now, this may not necessarily be a bad thing as long as that manufacturer has done a very good job of testing them. There is a cost associated with sending this driver off to Microsoft. So you may find some, uh, some pieces of hardware that you get just aren't unsigned. They never will be. In fact, they'll have in the installation guide when the message comes up that says it's unsigned, press OK, because we know about that. There are some organizations that won't load any hardware on their systems unless those drivers have been tested by Microsoft. There's very few organizations like that. But that gives you an idea when that message pops up what that's referring to. So let's look at our device drivers. Let's see what it's like to install and look at our device driver controls in Windows XP. Here's our Windows desktop. There are a few ways to get to the device manager in Windows, and you may be asked on the exam how you would do that. And it might give you three or four different examples. One way to do it, very common way, is to right mouse click on my computer, and there's an option here for manage. Manage is a great place to go because it brings up the Microsoft Management Console and gives you a lot of different options. You'll be going back to this Management Console quite a bit. You'll notice one of the things listed in the computer management screen is this Device Manager, and that launches that same Device Manager view that we saw before. But what if my computer wasn't on the desktop? What if for some reason you couldn't get to it? You can always go to your Start menu. In the settings for your control panel, it will pop up, uh, obviously, your control panel that you have there. One of the options on your control panel is the system. If we right mouse, double click on system, rather, we'll bring up our system properties screen. Under the hardware tab is an option for device manager. So it's a little bit of a longer process to get there, but it takes you to the same place. It takes you to the device manager for your system. This happens to be the one that we're running on our Windows XP system. Now, one of the things you'll notice already when you go into the device managers are a lot of different categories, but you'll notice a few things are popping up on us. There's a printer port here that's got an X next to it, and there's a VMware SCSI controller that has a yellow exclamation mark next to it. So we know something unusual is going on here we may want to address. Now, this is going to give you this visual feedback on how these different devices are doing. And if you wanted to see more about any of them that are running just fine, we can click on any of these devices. We can click on our floppy disk controller, for instance. And you can see the standard floppy disk controller is here. It gives you a little icon there. If we right mouse click on any of these drivers, it will say that we can update this driver. We can disable this particular driver or, or completely uninstall it from here. We can scan for hardware changes. If you added some new hardware to your system and Windows didn't see it, you can force Windows to go into the scanning mode. It's not often done, but it's available for you to choose. Another option here is properties. And if we bring this up, it gives us more information about this. What we're hoping to see is in this device status box, we're hoping to see that this device is working properly. If there's any other message in here, then for some reason, that piece of hardware and your operating system aren't talking to each other with this driver. And the driver will have identified, we're not able to see this device, we're not talking to it properly. We should find out more about why that's occurring. Let's look at a device manager and find out what happens when it's not running properly. If we look at our VMware SCSI controller here, we've added a new hard drive controller into this system. And we've not loaded any drivers for it currently. And I can bet that's why we're getting this yellow exclamation mark here. And if we right mouse click and choose properties, our device manager will tell us why that SCSI controller is having a problem. It says it's not running well, that Windows cannot load the device driver for this hardware. The driver may be corrupted or it may be missing. And click Troubleshoot. There's a built-in troubleshooting wizard that takes you through this process of installing the driver. We're going to cancel out of here, and we're going to install this driver ourselves. One of the things we can do is right mouse click and update the driver. Windows will ask us now for more information about how we should update this. Do we want to connect out to Windows Update to search for the latest driver? Not this time. I happen to have the driver on a floppy disk on the system. 
And what we would like to do is notice that Windows says we want to install for VMware SCSI controller. But what we want to do is instead of installing the software automatically, we want to install it from a list or a specific location. I have it on a floppy disk that's in drive A, and that's my default. Notice that I could say search for the best driver that's in this location of your floppy drive, your CD-ROM. Just go through the list of your removable media or include this particular location in the search. And you can put in many different options there for locations of where drivers might be. Or you can say, don't search any of those at all. I'll choose the driver to install. What I want to tell Windows to do is not to search anything. I'm going to choose the driver that I would like to install in this Windows system and click Next. What I want to do is maybe that I have a disk that has found some controller versions out there. But I know the latest one that I have. In fact, there's a couple of versions out here. I may have a newer one on my floppy. We're going to find out. I'm going to click the Have the Disk button. And it's going to say, where would you like to copy these files from? Well, I want to copy them from A. It's exactly where I'd like to go. So we'll click OK. And it says, well, there is a VMware SCSI controller on that A drive. Is that the one that you'd like to install? We'll click that driver so it is highlighted. And this driver, you'll notice, is digitally signed. So this has gone through that signature process from Microsoft. VMware has done that. We'll click Next, and it says it's going to install the software. It's copying over the driver, and now it's done. And in most cases, if you ever need to force a driver install, that's a great way to do it. Instead of having Microsoft Windows go through its normal automatic process, and you already know you have that driver, and it's on a floppy drive or it's on a CD-ROM, that's a great way to do it. We'll click Finish. And notice now our, our exclamation mark with the yellow is gone. And if we right mouse click on that SCSI controller, it now says the device is working properly. I would say it if I had it up on the screen there. It now says the device is working properly. So now what we've done is install the software driver necessary so that Microsoft Windows and that hardware controller that we added into the system can now communicate back and forth. And as long as we get this device is working properly, we can feel very good about the way that this driver has been installed. Now, when we go back to our main device manager screen, you'll see that that VMware virtual SCSI disk device is there. It has a red X next to it. And if we look at the properties for that disk device, this device is, is disabled. That's what that red X means, is that it has been administratively disabled. Well, now that we can communicate to the controller, let's tell it that we'd like to enable the disk that is on that controller. And it says, next, we would like to enable that device. And it says, Windows has successfully enabled this device. And now we're able to see that the device is working properly. And we can start our process of initializing that drive, formatting it, and then adding other things to it. It's now a part of our, our whole system. And we're able to talk not only the controller, but we're able to use the drives that are connected to that controller. Now, if this person was also having a problem printing onto their, drive, onto their uh, printer that they have connected to their machine, we may come to our device manager and see that, indeed, there is a problem here on this printer port. It also has an X next to it. And if we right mouse click and look at properties, we can see that it's disabled as well. So anytime you see one of those red Xs, that means that the device is disabled. And we can say that we'd like to enable it. We use the same process of going through enabling that and finishing. And now you can see that our printer port is back to working normally. And we should be able to print properly through that piece of hardware. Occasionally, when you begin a device driver installation, especially if you've downloaded one from a website, that website configuration instructions may tell you before you install this driver, be sure to uninstall the current driver. It's a process that's very common. So you need to make sure you look at your, uh, your instructions that when you download drivers, every single driver manufacturer is a little bit different in the way they do things. So make sure that it says if you need to uninstall a driver, that you go through this process. On our desktop, we'll go back to our device manager. And I'm going to use the shortcut this time. I'm going to right mouse click on my computer and choose Manage. And from here, I'm going to select my device manager. So here we are in the device manager. And let's say that we did get a message that we needed to uninstall a particular driver, perhaps our SCSI controller that we had before. We want to remove it prior to doing any adding a new driver onto this. And if we right mouse click, one of the options you'll see is to update, to disable, or to uninstall the driver. This is exactly where we would do it. If we choose that, it says that this VMware SCSI controller is about to be uninstalled from your system. And it gives you a nice little warning there to let you know about that. We'll click OK. 
And what you're going to see is that that whole driver, that disk controller, has now disappeared from our device manager. And that's very simple to do. It's very point and click and very easy. Just have to make sure that you become very accustomed to using that device manager because that's where you'll spend a lot of time troubleshooting hardware. In review, we've done a lot with Device Manager today. We've looked at a device driver overview and why they are important to have a device driver on your system. We've gone through an installation process with device drivers and our SCSI controller that we added. We verified that it was working properly and made sure we had enabled the, the particular pieces we needed in here. And finally, we uninstalled the device driver in case we wanted to replace a controller or upgrade a controller. Now we know how to remove those drivers from our system. For more videos, to participate in our message boards or our online wiki, you can visit our website, freeaplus.com.